In this video, we're going to be pulling apart a master material that was created for the Pixel Labs MoGraph Materials for Unreal Pack. Because I want to open up one without affecting the rest of them, I'm going to duplicate one of the master materials that we're looking into. So select the Retro Reflective Master, hit Control D, and then rename it so you add a suffix, like I'm going to add underscore FC at the end, you can add whatever you want. And now we're going to double click on this to check it out. Now, this material, obviously, is a lot more complex than what we've been looking at, but it's not as complex as, say, the, the Quixel Mega Scans materials. By the way, if you ever do start making materials that are going to be used by other people, start to think about organizing like this. If you select lots of nodes, you can hit C, and it'll create a comment box around those nodes. Really, really useful for you to leave notes for future developers to use your code. So, let's have a look. They've got these named reroute nodes. They're really, really great to be able to organize bits of code in certain areas of the graph and then just reference it somewhere else in the graph so you don't have wires going everywhere. It does make it a little bit hard to do what I would recommend beginners do, which is work your way backwards. Start at the base material and then say, what plugs into base color? We can find the color final and then we can right click and go select named reroute declaration and that will show you where it's coming from. Zoom out, we can see that it's in this yellow box up the top. So up here is where I think I'll put the proceduralism in because that's where the color is coming from. Working our way backwards, I can see that there are some chromatics and it says fake pluses acts on a surface color. Okay, so that's not the surface color, but we go back, there's switches. Now you can also notice that in these switch nodes, it says param in the name of the node, which tells me that if I create a material instance from this material, this will become a switch that I can turn on or off. This default value is false, so I'm gonna follow that back. And this one is true, so I'm gonna follow that back and I find my two colors that I'm going to use to set. What we're going to be doing is just adding a little bit of proceduralism so that we don't have to change it for every single instance. Let's go back to our other material and we're going to copy in our per instance random and gradient texture. And I'm going to use that instead of the base color. The other thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of variation in luminance up and down for every single color. So I'm gonna take that same per instance random, plug it into a multiply. So instead of going between zero and one, we're going between zero and two. I'm going to subtract one. So now it goes from negative one to plus one. And then I'm going to add a multiply node, right click on the second pin and select promote to parameter. I'm gonna name this color random amplitude. It'll determine the overall range of our plus or minus. And then I'm going to add it to our original color. So shifting the luminance up and down. And then we're gonna plug that back into our graph as if it was the color all along. Make sure to click apply and then click save, and then we can close this window. Now, instead of creating our own material instance from scratch, I'm gonna show you another way, especially useful if we already have material instances that have been created. Because we just copied the master material, let's navigate to where the material instances based off that master material are. They're in the folder called Retro Reflective, and I'm going to yeah, I'll duplicate this retro diamond one because it's using a really interesting pattern that I like. I'm going to add the suffix again, underscore FC, and then I'm going to just really quickly apply it to all of our um, instances so we can see what we're doing. Now, when we open up this material instance, I'm going to scroll down to where it says parent. And it's currently set to retro reflective master, which is the one that we copied. So I'm going to click the down arrow scroll down and the one underneath it should be our copy. So we've applied the material instance to our cloner, but nothing's there, mainly because the scene isn't very well lit. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna turn on emissive color, and I'm gonna turn on emissive strength and set it to four for the moment. Now, all that'll do is just make it very, very orange and glowy and bright, but we can come back into our material and then add the same color that we have here into our emissive. So let's right click on our emissive final and select named reroute declaration. 
And then instead of this color here, we're going to actually add our color final. Click apply and then save. And now we're starting to see that same randomness come through. Let's add a little bit of a uh, per, ran per instance random to multiply against the emissive strength. But what I might do is I might also multiply that again, promote that to parameter, call that emissive random multiplier. Just to reorganize things a bit. Another good thing is that because the gradient texture is a parameter, we don't necessarily just have to have a heat map gradient. We can bring in other gradients if we'd like, like these that I've sourced online. I hope this gives you some idea of what's possible with instancing and proceduralism and inspires you to crack open some master materials to see how other people think about how to code Unreal materials. And one final tip, don't forget if you're just beginning with materials, try disconnecting each pin and then reconnecting it to see what effect it has in real time in your viewport. If you're stuck on anything with materials, let me know also, and I'll hopefully unpack some more concepts in the future. Until then, I hope you have a great time in Unreal creating some amazing motion design, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.